This podcast is brought to you by the team at New Zealand Trucking Magazine. Remember to get your hands on the latest issue from your favourite retailer or subscribe now at nztrucking.co.nz. Keep on moving. The official podcast of New Zealand Trucking Media. Hello, welcome to the Keep On Moving podcast. On the podcast this month, uh, we'll reflect back on a wonderful event that happened in Hamilton not that long ago, all centred around a seven-year-old boy called Oliver Johnson. We'll talk to Laura Hulley about uh, how you stay away from, well, that stodgy food at this time of the year. Plus, we'll hear from Justin Ty Umbers, the CEO, of course, of National Road Carriers. But first up, Oliver Johnson, seven, obsessed with trucks. His mum, Catherine, posted on a Facebook page offering $50 for anyone willing to take him for a ride in their truck for his birthday. Well, it all got out of hand, really. In the end... Over 60 trucks, over 60 trucks turned up thanks to one Barry Hart and Hart haulage in the Waikato. Here's Carl Kirkback, our roving reporter, on the scene on the day. Here it comes. Here comes the convoy for little Oliver Johnson and his eighth birthday. There we go, there's our pilot. And behind there... <laughs> and behind there we've got uh, TR's buddy Mighty Mac and there's Josh there you go team this is what this industry is all about one little man team trucky that's uh, had a bit of a rough time of it Needs a bit of a birthday celebration and uh, put the word out. This is what happens. I just want to say a massive thanks to everybody for coming out today. I mean, this is absolutely surreal for us to have thought we might have, you know, one or two trucks that would take Ollie for a drive and then ended up with five or ten of you guys and girls put your hand up. And I am beyond overwhelmed to say a huge thanks for everybody coming out. This is just something else. I don't think anybody probably saw this happening. Um, there's so many of you to think I can't do it individually, but a massive, massive thank you to CNR uh, Developments for opening this venue up. I mean, this is out of this world. I don't know if you've been in there yet. If you haven't, you're in for a hell of a treat. Um, to every single truckie that, that bought your truck, I know what this means to you, and I know what this probably costs you, so I just want to say thanks. And to Ollie... Where are you, my boy? Happy birthday. Yeah. Uh, I hope this is a cool day and one that you'll uh, um, remember forever. Um, I think most of us are going to remember this forever, so <laughs> well done. Well done. So um, I guess it's time to get that B minor in, in tune, eh? I reckon. What do we reckon? Yeah. All right, guys. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Happy birthday to you! Hooray! 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 Thank you just doesn't cover what has happened today. We have been overwhelmed by support and messages from all over New Zealand and even all around the world. So we. Bless you. But there is just one quick thing I want to say for today. There is one man. That would have been here. He would have been here with absolute bells on. That isn't with us today. So, Papa, may you rest in peace, mate. A massive thank you to everybody. We couldn't buy flowers and chocolates for you all. I'm sorry, but to the Hart Haulage family, we would like to give you this. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, like service foods have been amazing. They've come along, donated all this for, for you guys and, and girls. So hopefully there's a, a little bit of food. 
I thought there might have been 50 to, to 80 people, so we might run out. But anyway, <laughs> thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Um, if anybody wants to come and say hello to Ollie, Ollie wants to say you know, something. If we do go into the shop, do we have to buy anything? No, you're right. <laughs> oh, there's a um, there's a, a hybrid vest on the black car over there. Everybody can sign that as a memento for Ollie. Um, she's Ollie's trucking, and uh, it's been very kindly donated. Who's my man? Thank you very much. Um, and so there's been so much stuff donated. You guys have been uh, unbelievable. So cake to cut as well. What a wonderful, wonderful story, and it just shows you how generous the trucking industry is. All right, let's talk health and fitness and go to our health and fitness guru, Laura Hulley. Now, Laura, it's so hard to stay away from that stodgy food at this time of the year, isn't it? Oh, I know. That's the plumbing age-old question, isn't it? Because when it's freezing, you're not craving a salad, are you, or a smoothie? So I guess it's you can either try and limit the the stodgy foods or avoid them altogether. It sort of depends upon your willpower, but I've always been one to sort of push balance and still enjoying yourself, Uh, but it obviously means, you know, not having a pie twice a day every day. So it's just sort of thinking about ways to limit the, the portions or the amount of times that you have those types of foods throughout the week. So we're talking like, yeah, your pastries, your pies, your pizzas, your hot chips and all that yum stuff. Um, The other thing you can do is you can make your own comfort food. So normally we want nice and warm foods because it's freezing. Um, So what you can do is you can do your homemade soups, your casseroles, um, nice meaty goodness. But because it's homemade, you know it's going to be a little bit healthier than uh, than buying it at a bakery or something like that. Um, What we do in our house is we do Friday night takeaways. So we know that once a week we've got that treat to look forward to and we'll choose pizza or fish and chips or something like that. And in the scheme of a whole week, if you're having takeaways for one meal out of all your meals over seven days, I feel like there's absolutely no harm in that. Um, And it's just trying to make sure that the majority of your meals are good and wholesome, have some veggies in there, and then there's absolutely no harm in grabbing a pie on a Friday. Friday pie day is uh, is quite a common uh, tradition. Um, But, yeah, I feel like it's just finding that balance between creating your own homemade, healthy, wholesome comfort food And then on the days where it's freezing or you can't be bothered or you haven't prepped anything, then you could go to your bakery. And you can also try and manage your portions. So if you're trying to be good, instead of having a pie, you could opt for a savoury. So you're still kind of ticking off that craving, still having that nice warm food, but you're sort of just minimising the portion. So there is little tips and tricks Um, little small things that you can do to sort of tweak the amount of those foods that you're having. But, yeah, I would say definitely don't deprive yourself of of all of those foods. If you enjoy them, you need to try and weave them into your diet. So then that way it feels more like a lifestyle and more like a sustainable habit rather than saying, I'm not going to have anything like that for three months because then you crave it even more so. I think we've discussed this before. If you're about to do a 12-hour shift in a truck, though, it's best to spend 40 minutes just planning what you're going to do, how you're going to eat, right? Yeah, exactly. And I know you probably you feel buggered and you know you've got a massive day ahead, but just putting aside half an hour to even just have heat up a pre-made soup or, or just buying a quiche or something like that, um, just so you're a little bit more prepared because if you go into your day with absolutely no food or no idea of what you're eating, that's normally when you make sort of all of your poor choices or, or worse choices with your food. Um, so if you can just set aside half an hour, I know the time is precious for truckies and they do work massive hours, but just set that time aside and then you know, sweet, I've got some snacks, I've got a good Sammy for lunch or, or whatever it may be, 
and then you know you sort of set for most of your meals and then if you want, splash out and grab a burger for dinner or something like that. Laura Hulley, a health and fitness guru with a few pointers there. Right, this is the Keep On Moving podcast. Uh, time to uh, head to the associations. Well, one of them this time around. Uh, let's go to Justin Ty Umbers, who's the CEO of National Road Carriers. And I understand uh, there's a new seminar series underway through you guys. Yeah, we have. Look, um, since I joined as, as chief executive at National Road Carriers, I've spent, it's nearly been a year, which I can't believe, but I've spent the last year um, getting out and about meeting our members. And being new to the industry, you're, you're, I'm out there asking a lot of dumb questions um, and, and learning how it all works. But one thing that really struck me um, was the level of expertise that we've got out there amongst um, the drivers and operators. And, and very quickly when you're talking with them about the big issues, be it roading, regulations, um, driver shortage, the conversation gets into a, and the, to a technical level of detail quite fast, which I've, I've found fascinating. Um, and it shouldn't be surprising because the operators are out there, they're the experts on the road every day. No one's, no one's more exposed to it than they are. Um, so what I thought was, well, look, we need to find a way to tap into this um, passion and expertise. And, and I think there's a real hunger for the people that I talk to um, to be able to hear directly from um, the, those in the agencies, like the Waka Kaitahis of the world, and also to be able to ask questions. So what we decided to do was, well, look, why not create a platform where our members can do that, ask the questions they've been itching to know the answers from, um, and also hear direct from the people who are in, in the driver's seat over at the agency. So, um, yeah, we kicked off last week and we, we had our first session um, with Waka Kotahi, so it's great to get that on the road. So what were the key takeaways on our roading maintenance around New Zealand? Yeah, what we, what we did, we had, um, we had the National Manager for Maintenance and Operations, um, Peter Brown from Waka Kotahi, and also um, Jackie Huriholt, who um, will be familiar to many out there as the, as the Northland Regional Manager. Um, and what they talked about was how they're, how they're facing um, the national roading plan, how they go about doing it for maintenance and operations. Key, key takeaways were there are a couple of them. I think probably the first one and the positive one was um, the rebuild work that they um, have done recently actually stood up to um, uh, Cycling Gabriel. So those roads that had been um, recently maintained and rebuilt um, you know, it survived all of that flooding and, and, and weather deluge, which is, is really pleasing. I think the, the other interesting thing they've, they've talked about is, look, um, this, is, this has taken us decades to get into this position where the roading network, unfortunately, is, um, you know, obviously really well behind in maintenance and, and pavement re- rehabilitation, and they have said it is going to take years to get out of it. Um, so they're, they're quite upfront about that, but but talked us through the things that they're doing around improving resilience um, and and preventative works to stop all the slips like we've seen at Dome Valley, for example, doing preventative works so that when the next weather pattern does come through, um, those slips won't happen. So it was a really, really interesting conversation and and great to have them there. And just tell us a little bit about the, the bridge closures too. Yeah, that's been quite a hot topic lately, um, and, and understandably. So since the, we had the uh, accident on the bridge in 2020, there's, there's obviously been a new standard put in place for managing um, wind conditions on the bridge. Quite controversial about, you know, some. I think there's been a view out there, um, are we being too, uh, too super cautious when it comes to closing the bridge? This has obviously got a huge impact on transport operators um, looking to get through Auckland from... Northland down to central North Island and vice versa, let alone all of the Auckland operators. Um, and I was lucky enough to be presented from Waka Kotei the week before, just how about how they exactly go about risk managing um, that and what um, what the precise metrics that they use on the weather um, to make those decisions about. And it's not always pull the big lever or close the bridge. There's several levels before you get to that of um, starting to close lanes, starting to restrict certain traffic types, those kind of things. Um, so look, the, the long and the short of it is uh, ultimately, unfortunately, because we don't have a secondary, um, uh, secondary crossing yet that we've been calling for for decades, we are in a situation where we do have to close the only crossing we've got available in the wrong conditions. 
And that's because if we have one, we're just one accident away from where a, a large vehicle, um, probably a truck, gets blown into the wrong part of that bridge structure, um, we could have a situation where that bridge is closed for months while the structural integrity is um, repaired. And so that would be months of having to detour State Highway 16, and we can all imagine the carnage that would cause for, for Auckland traffic in totality. So um, a, a real learning on why early infrastructure investment and planning and resilience is so critical and, and we've really been let down by the fact that we didn't kick off the second crossing decades ago. As far as the webinar series is concerned, uh, what have you got on the pipeline next? Yeah, so we we are going to continue the, the kind of the technical series. Um, I think as, as I was talking before, you know, there's a huge amount of interest um, you know, roading, for example, you end up in a lot of conversations with people over the, the, the various merits of chip seal versus asphalt various versus concrete. Um, and, you know, what, what is the bitumen um, supply like now that Marsden Point refineries um, closed? I think there's a, there's a lot of interest in, in, in that level of detail, so we'll look to continue a technical series there. But next cab off the rank actually should be um, a political one that we're planning to get done. So that's getting all of the transport spokespersons from the various parties coming in, having a panel discussion and talking us through what their plans and policies are that will affect road freight industry um, post-election, which I'm, which I'm really looking forward to. But certainly for the live events, it's um, register, register as an NRC member and you'll be able to um, watch them or you can uh, attend or you can watch them later on. And there we are. That's Justin Diambers, the CEO of National Road Carriers. If you like what you hear, please share this with your friends. Uh, share this with uh, people within the industry as well. And just a reminder, you can hear this uh, daily too on Trucking Radio 24-7. And how do you hear Trucking Radio 24-7? Well, a couple of options. Go to the uh, various app stores and download the Trucking Radio app, or you can hear us on iHeartRadio. Next time I do this, I'll get my partner in crime involved, uh, Dave McCoy, managing editor, of course, of NZ Trucking Media. Otherwise, uh, thanks so much for your time. We'll catch up soon. Keep on moving. The official podcast of New Zealand Trucking Media.